Hi everyone, uh, so we have started this topic uh, radiographic testing and in the previous two classes uh, we learned about uh, the basic principle behind this technique which was uh, primarily based on uh, this particular equation that we derived in the previous class. that when X-rays uh, travel through a matter uh, there is attenuation or uh, decrease in the intensity of the X-rays which is uh, proportional to the distance through which the X-rays travel and the absorption property of the material uh, through which uh, the X-rays are traveling. So, this is what we derived and this will form the basis uh, for the radiographic testing. And uh, this is the property of the material uh, with regard to absorption of X-rays and this is known as mass absorption coefficient. And the unit for this is centimeter square per gram and we have also seen that M is equal to uh, mu by rho, wherein mu is uh, the linear absorption coefficient. And mu, uh, the unit for mu is centimeter inverse. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, the equation which governs radiographic testing and then we also saw that the different kinds of uh, atomic scattering events which uh, leads to attenuation of the X-rays or their absorption and today we will continue on this and now we are going to see how X-rays are used uh, to do uh, radiographic testing and form the image. So, if you uh, talk about the image formation now. The first thing that you need uh, is an X-ray source and the source should, should be uh, as small as possible in terms of the spot size. If you have a point source uh, that is best, but uh, practically using a point source there are uh, limitations which we are going to talk about now. So, then uh, you have the X-rays uh, coming from this source and going into the sample. And now, if you have any defect uh, in the sample, that will be imaged along with the sample in the radiographic film, which is uh, kept below the sample. Okay. So, then you will see a 2 D image or the shadow of this whole sample and the defect. Uh, on the image which is formed on the radiographic film. Okay. So, this is how uh, the image is formed. And as I told you need a focused beam and the focal spot size should be as small as possible because lower the spot size higher will be the image quality.
But remember one thing when you have a small uh, spot size, you have uh, electron streams focusing on a very small area and this will lead to intense heating locally around that area and as a result of that uh, you know you have to control the power, you have to reduce the power so that uh, there is no excessive heating on the target. Okay. So, therefore, uh, when you uh, try and use uh, small spot size, there is always uh, a trade off between the spot size and the power. Okay, so, there is a range of uh, spot size which is available in the instruments uh, which are used for radiographic testing that we will talk about little later as to uh, what kind of sizes are available and uh, you know uh, what will be their effect on the image quality. So, you have the primary components uh, of this radiographic instrument uh, is first the X-ray source, the X-ray tube that you have which uh, gener generates the x-rays and uh, the second one is the film on which you capture the image. Okay. This is primarily a photographic film which interacts uh, with electromagnetic radiation like visible light or x-ray radiation and when it interacts it darkens as I would have said you before also in the beginning when I showed you that uh, radiographic image of our hand. So, there also you saw that the whole uh, plate is darkened and only the image of the hand you can see some white contrast uh, for the bones. Okay. So, the property of this uh, photographic film is whenever it is exposed to uh, electromagnetic radiation it darkens and the extent of the darkening will depend on the amount of uh, radiation which is falling on it. Okay. If the radiation falling uh, on the plate on the photographic film is high, the darkening will be high and similarly, if the radiation falling on it is low, the extent of darkening will be low and that is how you see the contrast on the photographic film depending on the intensity falling on the film. So, this photographic film uh, it primarily contains an emulsion of a material uh, which can easily interact with X-rays. So, this emulsion material is uh, silver bromides or silver uh, halides most commonly used uh, is uh, silver bromide. Okay. So, this uh, silver bromide uh, particles that you have in this emulsion uh, it is coated over a thin plastic sheet kind of thing because that is that is how we have all seen uh, this uh, photographic film it is a thin plastic uh, sheet. So, this AGBR uh, particles are coated over an organic uh, gelatin matrix on both the sides. The thickness of the base film on which this emulsion is coated is around 0.2 mm and the coating thickness is point zero two mm. Okay, so, this is how the film is made. 
you have this emulsion uh, which contains these uh, silver bromide particles and this emulsion is coated on a plastic material like a gelatin matrix uh, as a thin coating. And if you see this film uh, without exposing it or before the exposure, it uh, looks like a blue color uh, film. Okay. So, it is a light blue color film, but we have most of the time seen it as a black color film because when it is exposed, it becomes black. Okay. But before exposure, if you see the color is light blue. So, when this film is exposed to X-ray radiation, this uh, silver bromide particles are going to interact with the X-rays and the X-ray energy will be absorbed by these particles and it will release uh, the silver ions. And the silver ions will form that latent image uh, which is further processed and developed and that is how the contrast is created by uh, releasing of the silver ions when they interact with X-rays. A small fraction of uh, the X-ray energy uh, is used in liberating the silver ions as I told which will form the latent image and when you further develop it, uh, you will get the contrast. Okay, so, this is how uh, the image is formed by liberation of uh, the silver ions when they interact with X-rays. And these uh, silver halides uh, are most uh, sensitive to uh, energy in the range of uh, around 45 uh, kilo electron volt. And the efficiency of the image formation can be improved uh, by using what is called as intensifying screens, which we are going to talk about little later. Okay. So, now you can easily correlate if you go back to that uh, image that I showed you in the beginning, right this one. So, now you can easily correlate why these bones are appearing white because you have used uh, this photographic film which gets darkened when it is exposed to X-rays and as I told this darkening will depend on the amount of energy which is falling on it. And since the bones will absorb uh, the maximum am amount of energy, so the in intensity, X-ray intensity coming out from the bones will be much lower compared to the rest of the portion of the body part. 
and as a result uh, this bones will appear white because the extent of darkening from the intensity coming out from the bones will be lower. Okay. And uh, there are uh, some properties uh, that these uh, films have. So, let us talk about uh, the characteristics or properties of the X-ray film because these properties will finally decide the quality of the image. One of the most important properties of X-ray films is what is known as photographic uh, density. Which is uh, written as D and D is given by this expression log of B naught by B t, wherein B naught is the intensity of the incident X rays or the intensity of the incident uh, beam and B t refers to intensity of a transmitted light through a completely darkened and developed film. So, you take the uh, film which is already developed and darkened and then measure the intensity of light uh, which is passing through it and now if you take the ratio of this incident intensity and the transmitted intensity which is B naught by B t and if you take the log of it you get the photographic density D. For example, uh, if you have d equal to 1, then this means that uh, transmission is 10 percent. d 1 means uh, b naught by B t is uh, 10, right? That means B t by B naught, which is the transmission, is 1 by 10 or 10 percent, right? Similarly, uh, if it is 2, then uh, the transmission will be. 1 percent. Because in that case B t by uh, B naught will be 1 by 100, so it is 1 percent. So, when you see a contrast on the film, uh, it essentially means that uh, between two regions that you see a contrast, they have different density d. Okay. So, the contrast or the radiographic contrast is nothing but the difference in the densities between two regions. So, this is the second property of the film which is the radiographic contrast. So, 
So, as I said this is nothing but the difference uh, in the densities uh, between two regions. If we call this as C s, this is the density difference. So, this can be uh, written in terms of uh, the transmitted intensity V 2 and V 1. Now, the most important thing uh, for the film is this curve which is known as a film characteristic curve. which shows you the relationship uh, between the photographic density and the exposure. So, to obtain a particular density on the image what should be the exposure that is defined by this uh, characteristic curve and this exposure is defined as intensity i multiplied by the exposure time t. So, this is i times t. And if you now uh, plot this uh, density with uh, with the exposure or log of exposure then you get a curve like this. Okay. So, this curve is known as the characteristic curve and every film is supplied with this particular curve. The manufacturer has to uh, you know do uh, the tests and uh, provide this curve for a particular film. And from this film you can derive uh, certain other properties uh, for the film uh, which are important. Uh, for forming the image on a radiographic film. So, this uh, provides you uh, another parameter known as uh, film gradient which is nothing but the slope of this uh, straight line portion. So, if the gradient is called as g, then g is the slope which is d 1 minus d 2 and log epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. And epsilon we have already defined as i times t. 
So, for the same time of exposure this will be I 1 by I 2. And we have also uh, seen that D 1 minus D 2 is the contrast C s. Therefore, G can be written in terms of the contrast uh, C s in this fashion. or C s can be written as this in terms of G. Okay. So, this is a very important parameter for a film for a good quality image you need a high gradient. And if you consider uh, this range of exposure between two different densities, then this is known as film latitude. So, this is uh, another parameter with regard to the film known as the film latitude. And this is uh, defined as the range of sample thickness that can be recorded with a single exposure. Okay, and as you could see uh, from this curve, uh, this gradient and latitude are inversely related to each other. For high gradient, the latitude will be smaller and similarly for smaller uh, gradient, the latitude will be larger. Okay, so, uh, these are the different uh, properties of the film uh, which uh, control the quality of the image which finally form on the film. Okay. And uh, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, today's lecture. So, the rest of the things uh, that we have uh, for this particular topic we are going to take up uh, in the next class. So, today I am going to stop here. Thank you for your attention.